Hello and welcome to the second lesson in this free series, this free course that I've made for you guys. If you've missed the first lesson, head to the first one. It's how to paint environments, which is kind of like my creative process step by step of how I paint everything that I paint. <laughs> and I really hope it will help you. In this lesson, we will be looking at how to use colour. I'm going to share with you a few tips of things to think about when you're trying to incorporate colour into your paintings, especially digital paintings. So let's get into it. In this art lesson, I want to kind of talk about the process of how to integrate colour into your paintings. So colour in art, not just digital art, any art. So colour in art is a very frustrating aspect. <laughs> because we've grown up our entire lives being taught the colours that we see and it almost holds us back because we miss out on the colours that we don't recognise. So I've come up with five steps of how to elevate your colour use in your artworks. Oh, if you don't know me, hi, my name is Jess. I'm an environment artist working in the video game industry. I've been freelancing for over It'll be nearly six years now. I specialize in environment art and I want to share some techniques and some tips of how to improve your color because color is one of my favorite aspects of art. It is so fun. <laughs> it really, and it wasn't easy because I used to be an artist that started working from black and white and then trying to integrate color afterwards, which doesn't really, it's, you lose a lot of that feeling and those extra bits of colour that you would that would make a painting so elevated and an artwork so unique and energetic. So I want to share my method and my thought process of how I integrate colour into my digital artworks. And this this kind of um, knowledge can also be applied to any medium. You can apply it as well to gouache painting, traditional painting. It can also be, if you're colouring in any traditional medium, it applies to as well, but it's specifically colour medium, of course. So let's get into it. So the first tip that I have with how to improve your colour usage is look at the world around you and study colour from life. What I mean by this is that in our entire lives, we've been taught that this cup is blue, this mug is yellow, this camera is silver. This book is brown. We've been taught from childhood what colours are, and it's almost like limited our perspective. And this is with almost every human being, I think, in life. <laughs> but the thing is, as artists, we have to go beyond that and see all the small colours that most people miss out on. So let's take this photo of a car, for example. So Generally, I think most people would say this is an orange car, right? Because, <laughs> I mean, clearly it's orange. But the thing is, as artists, we need to go beyond what we usually, what other people usually see. So right now, I can actually color pick in Photoshop here. I can color pick. There's so many different colors just in this car form. And that's not even counting, like, the silver. The silver and um, metal part is a whole range of colours as well. So let's pick the colour that, you know, most people can generally see. Already, the areas where the light hits, that's a yellow. That's not orange. <laughs> the areas here where probably most people would, um, you know, they would say this is the colour of the car, that would be the mid-tone. So we've got the orange here. And we've got some shadows here. If I even pick down here near the front, of the car with my color picker. If you see the ring pop up, that's a brown almost. It's not a really nice color. This is where we can use our own creativity to manipulate these colors so that they are something more appealing. Like I'm gonna add a bit of blue to it, cool it up. And then from these silver parts, these are just like the reflections of what is reflected um, onto the metal. So we got grey, which tends to be what people generalise as the colour of metal. But then you've got the car reflection and you've got a bit of yellow here. If I can colour pick that, that's kind of the yellow. <laughs> so already we've got a array of colours. Like this colour palette here is actually really nice. That's a really nice set of colours to be able to go ahead and make a painting. But the thing is we can also extend our color palette. So if I wanted to get even more creative, deepen that shadow, adding the cool in, and with the light, 
making it warmer and upping the value if I can move it it's all about being quite analytical and just noticing the world around you and what colors they actually are so let's try another example, a little bit more um, of a landscape environment one. Um, this is an image I just, like, it just hopped onto my Pinterest homepage. <laughs> but it was, it's like the perfect example because this is usually, this is quite accurate to what we see in real life. The thing with photos is that photography, depending on the camera that you shoot with, it can destroy a lot of the colours that we see in real life, unless you're a very good photographer. But... This is a very good example of like colors are more than what most people realize. So in this situation, in this like area in Japan, most people would say the color of the snow is white. The Tory gate is red. Snow is already like such, it's so full of color. <laughs> already, this isn't white. This is like a warm gray almost. This is like a purple, this beautiful, amazing purple. Over here, another really nice bluish, like a cool tone purple, I guess you could say. And then the Tory gates and these lanterns here. Yeah, they're red. But it's not like the typical red that, you know, most people would think of. Even the shadows here, that is a very cool toned red. So there's already a bunch of colours here that were really, you know, it's more than what the normal eye can see. And that's what I want you to really take notice of, is this. So that is my first tip, is to study real life. And noticing and being able to see colour is already the first step to being able to use colour to your advantage. So the second tip I have is if you're creating a painting that has a specific emotion, decide the feeling that you want to create. Decide the mood that you want to create in the painting. And this is kind of a good starting point for when you're wanting to choose your colour palette because colours are very emotional things. <laughs> colours really um, tell the story of emotion. So for example, if you're painting a very calm scene that is near the ocean and with nature, thinking about like the cool tones that you'll be using is very crucial. Another feeling might be something like you want to create a refreshing feeling and by refreshing I mean something like the feeling that you get when you're out in nature when you're walking in the forest it's that clean refreshing feeling you would then go to a very natural color palette like greens blues all these cool tones a little bit of purple bits of yellow from the sun something like that so deciding what the feeling you want to create will really help with what colors you will choose. My third tip for um, how to use color will be to decide your warm and cool tones. And this is a game changer. A lot of artists, a lot of intermediate artists know this and it is very key with um, how to integrate it into your painting. It's also a thing that pops up when you're learning your art fundamentals because when you're learning your art fundamentals, you're learning about value and lighting and about your light source and thinking about what color that light source is. If you're using a warm light source like the natural sun, you would pick yellows, golds, oranges, and then from there you would use cool tones for your shadows. So that would be things like purples, a very cool tone purple. Using cool colors for your shadows would really give an elevated feeling to your artwork. And this is why working from black and white into color is probably not the most ideal situation. When you establish these warm and cool tones at the very beginning of your artwork, it really, really shines through. With natural lighting, it tends to be that we pick warm tones for our light source and cool tones for our shadows. It, however, can be inverted. A very common situation where you would have a cool light source would be artificial lighting. And by this, I mean like man-made lighting. A very go-to example for this is going to a hospital or a very official building. <laughs> 
interior. And I want you to take notice of the light source next time you go into a building like that, because you may notice it is a cool light source. It's one of those like big beam lights. They pick a cool light source for a specific reason. They want you to feel uncomfortable in those places. They want you to not feel sleepy and relaxed. They want you to feel alert and awake. The fourth tip I have with how to use color is to think about the time of day that you're painting your scene in. For example, light and the time of day is so crucial with what kind of colors we see in life generally. <laughs> and you can also take this a step further in thinking about what is the weather like in the scene that you're painting. So for example, say I'm painting a Japanese countryside. I need to think about things like what time of day is it? Okay, it's probably going to be like sunset kind of thing. I want to create and the reason why I want to make it a sunset is because I want to create that romantic feeling, almost like a very emotional feeling. Like I'm not creating a refreshing, uplifted feeling. I'm creating like a very calming, nostalgic feeling in this scene. So I pick the time of day would be sunset. What is the weather like? You can get creative with this. So for example, I know that um, the best sunsets, and I'm referencing real life from this, and this is where color study in real life is helpful. I know the best sunsets are ones where there's a little bit of clouds. Like it's not overcast because then you can't see anything. And it's also not like, you know, a clear sky because, I mean, those ones are beautiful as well, but I love seeing the color hit the clouds when there's a sunset. So I'm gonna make it like partly cloudy. And that's when you start adding in your lighting. That's when you would pick your tones, like I'm gonna be picking pinks and purples and yellows, oranges. And this is my light source. So my shadows would be something like very deep blues and things like that, you know? Yeah. So let's move on to the fifth tip. The fifth tip I would recommend, and this is if you're using like a digital painting program. So I'm I'm talking to my digital artists here. So when you're working digitally, whatever program you're using, import the specific photo directly. So here in Photoshop, I'm just going to pull in this photo. We have this amazing tool called the Color Picker. And all you can do is you color pick directly from your reference. This is not a new technique. I think almost everyone might know this technique. However, it's about picking the correct colors that is important. And this is where studying color from life is so crucial because if you're not knowledgeable about color in life, how are you going to pick good colors in your references if you just pick random colors? Color picking directly from photos that you take is a really good way to generate a color palette that you can integrate into your painting. Limiting the number of colors in your color palette as well will make it so much easier for you to be able to create a certain mood or whatever story that you're trying to tell in your painting. And yeah, that's my tip for color picking and stuff. There's so many other ways of like generating very quick color palettes too, especially digitally. In Photoshop, you can do this thing where you can just mosaic the, or pixelate the reference image that you've got. I do want to point out though, with this certain technique, it's good for base colors. It's, it's good as a starting point, but if you're wanting to integrate like the energetic feeling or interesting colors, this will destroy all those small colors that you'll miss out on. When I pixelate this image, I've only got a couple of nice colors, really? Like a lot of them got destroyed. If I zoom up up close here, like it's completely blurred out all the reds and there's some nice purples in the flowers. So it's losing all of that information as well. So something to just be aware of. And yeah. Those are actually, yeah, my five tips of how to use colour in your paintings and your artworks. Let me know if this was helpful for you and if there's anything I didn't cover. If there's anything you want me to cover, I can do that in the next lesson or next time. I'll make sure to make like a separate lesson for that. Um, I hope this was really useful for you. So um, I'm doing one more lesson in this free series and the next one will be coming out in a couple of days too so stay tuned for that and it's a very exciting one it's how to paint from imagination <laughs> which it is one of my favorite topics to talk about i hope you will join me for that if you're interested in how to elevate painting from your imagination stay tuned for that and yeah thank you very much and i'll see you next time